Understanding scope in JavaScript is important for writing clean and bug free code. This is one of the core concepts that we need to know to leverage it to write more efficient and effective code. Hi, I'm Rohan Roy and let's get to it. Imagine this box as our application, which has a couple of modules. Each module has several functions defined within it. We also have several variables defined at the application level, at module level and at each function level. Now, depending on where you have declared your variable or a function, it may or may not be accessible from different parts of our code. So we need to understand this accessibility. So what exactly is scope in JavaScript? In simple terms, scope determines the visibility and accessibility of variables and functions within a program. It defines where they are available and where they are not. It's a really powerful tool that provides us with two amazing benefits. First, it helps us create more modular and secure code. We can define specific areas of our code that are completely inaccessible and cannot be modified from outside, which can really help with code organization and security. And second, it helps us avoid variable name collisions, which is always a good thing. Now let's break it down further. There are two types of scope in JavaScript, global scope and local scope. Global scope refers to variables and functions that can be accessed from anywhere in the code. While local scope refers to variables and functions that are only accessible within a specific section of our code. Let's take a closer look at the global scope. Variables and functions declared anywhere outside of any function or block are considered to be in global scope. And these are accessible from anywhere in your code. We are going to look at three use cases where we can see global scope in action. The first case is a regular JS application, which is broken into several files and added to index.html, which can then be run on any browser. Let's open index.html in the browser and open the console. You can see the results. I want to point out that global data and functions inside utils file are declared in the global scope since they are not inside any function or block and are therefore accessible in interest calculator. Since we have added the files this way, the two functions in utils and all the variables in config and interest calculator exist in the global scope and can be seen in the global execution context. The second case is we take the same example, but in this case, we add each file as a module to index.html. We will also serve these files using a simple Node.js server. The reason for this is to avoid course error. This is a bit different from the former since we have added the files as type module, which means the variables and functions declared are isolated from each other unless we export them, but we can discuss that some other time. To make a variable or a function global, we need to add it in the global object, which in the browser's case is window. Let's start the server, access the URL in the browser, open the console, and we can see the result. The third case is to execute the same example using a Node.js terminal. We will modify it accordingly. Node.js executes our code a bit differently. We will run interest calculator file. We also need to import config and utils in the file using require. To declare a variable and a function in the global scope, we need to add it in the global object, which is accessible in all the executed files. In Node.js, it is the keyword global. When we run it in the terminal, we can see the result. Next, let us look at local scope. Local scope defines the accessibility of variables, functions and objects within a specific context. Local scope is essential for understanding some of the cool things that is possible, such as code that can be encapsulated, that is modular and maintainable. We can further categorize local scope into function scope, block scope and module scope. In function scope, variables and nested functions that are declared within a function are only accessible within that function. If we try to access them from outside, it will throw a reference error. Let's discuss a use case where we want to have a code to mimic a bank account. We can withdraw and deposit into this account. 
but for security purposes we don't want to accidentally modify the balance so we will encapsulate the balance deposit and withdraw logic into a function along with a function to check the current balance this function will return the deposit withdraw and current balance functions as an object this way we can do the operations and check the balance without accidentally changing the balance itself if we try to access the balance or any of the nested functions from outside then it will throw a reference error so this is function scope in action in javascript a block is a section of code that is contained within curly braces a block can contain zero or more statements and can be used to group statements together into a single unit of code that can be executed as a whole blocks are commonly used in conditional statements like if else switch case loops such as for while do while and functions so whenever you have used curly braces you have been knowingly or unknowingly created and used blocks in your code block scope was introduced in es6 and it allows let and const variables to be declared within a block of code such as an if statement for loop or even a function these variables are only accessible within that block of code or any nested blocks if we try to access them from outside then it will throw a reference error we will quickly check out two simple examples in the first we will declare a variable message at the global level at the function level if condition and else condition if i run it then we can confirm that the variables are created at each scope and the results are logged respectively we will quickly run it again for the else condition just to confirm the second example is a bit more interesting here we will use switch case to leverage block scope here the function operator will add or subtract two numbers based on parameter operation we have used switch case for that notice we have declared r twice once for each case if we run this now it will throw a syntax error to fix this we will wrap each case within curly braces and run it again and voila it runs as expected this is because now each variable r is in a different block scope a module is a self contained unit of code that defines a particular functionality and can be reused in different parts of our application we need to use the export keyword to specify the objects functions classes and variables that should be available for use outside the module please smash that like button if you are enjoying the video so far The scope of a module refers to the visibility and accessibility of variables and functions defined inside a module. A variable or a function that is declared inside a module and not declared inside a nested function or a nested block has a module level scope, which means it is not accessible from outside the module unless it is explicitly exported using the export keyword. In addition, a module can import functionality from other modules using the import keyword. This allows modules to be composed and reused in different ways without introducing naming conflicts or other issues we will reuse one of our previous example in which we calculate interest using principal rate time number of times which is defined in global data in config.js we will export global data using export keyword we will also define simple interest and compound interest in utils.js and we will export both of them In interest calculator dot js, we will import global data and both the functions using import keyword. We will use simple interest and compound interest functions and log the results. We will add this file as type module in index dot html. After that, we will open terminal, start the server, open it in the browser, open console, and see the result. This is ES module and its scope in action. In the next example we will reuse the same example but with common js modules which is what a node js application uses by default in config.js we are still going to export interest data but with module.exports same with utils.js where we are going to export both the function by assigning it to an object and then assigning that object to module.exports we are going to import the data and the two functions using the keyword require then we will use them to calculate the values and then logging them we will open the terminal run interest calculator file and see the result overall the use of modules in javascript helps promote the code organization reusability and maintainability by encapsulating functionality into self contained units of code and clearly defined boundaries 
द स्कोप चेन इज द ऑर्डर इन विच जावा स्क्रिप्ट इंजन लुक्स फॉर वेरिएबल्स एंड फंक्शन वेन दे आर रेफरेंस्ड इन अ पर्टिकुलर स्कोप नाउ कंसिडर द यूज केस वेर वी हैव अ ब्लॉक विच इज इन साइड अ फंक्शन विच इज इन साइड अनदर फंक्शन विच इज इन साइड अ मॉड्यूल विच इज इन ग्लोबल स्कोप सो वॉट हैपन्स इफ द ब्लॉक ट्राइज टू एक्सेस अ वेरिएबल फ्रॉम एनी ऑफ द आउटर स्कोप वेन अ वेरिएबल और अ फंक्शन इज रेफरेंस्ड देन द इंजन फर्स्ट लुक्स फॉर इट विद इन द करेंट स्कोप If that variable or function is not found in the current scope, then the engine will continue to look for it in the outer scopes until it finds that variable or function, or until it reaches the global scope. This is why we see a reference error when it doesn't exist. Also, for functions, the scope chain is determined by the location of the function's definition in the code rather than the location where the function is being called, and this is an important distinction. In this example we have two functions we are calling my function from the second function using a callback this callback is simply logging variable a we have variable a defined in my function we have also declared a just before calling my function with callback if we put a debug point and run the code then we can see that the outer scope of the callback is based on where it is being declared instead of where it is being called In JS, shadowing occurs when a variable declared in an inner scope has the same name as the variable declared in an outer scope. When this happens, the inner variable shadows the outer variable, meaning the reference to the variable in the inner scope will be chosen over the outer scope. Actually, the search for the variable reference starts from an inner scope and continues to outer scopes. But since the variable is found, the search stops. I mention this because it sometimes blindsides us and it can lead to unintentional and annoying bugs especially in complex logic. So my suggestion is to always use unique variable names. To summarize we discussed what scope is, its benefits, different types of scopes, different types of local scopes, scope chain and shadowing of variables along with several examples which covers important use cases. Please subscribe if you found this video interesting. and want to see more videos like this you should check out this video where i explain execution context in depth or this playlist on javascript related topics you might find it useful thank you for your time have a nice day namaskar